Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my shop. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be covering some regular maintenance upgrades uh, for a 99 through 2003 Ford 7.3 liter turbo diesel pickup truck. I know a lot of people are buying uh, trucks now to pull their tow vehicles, all the RV craze and stuff going on. And uh, what I'd like to do is cover uh, your typical upgrades. So if you buy a, an older 7.3, which in my opinion is probably the best Ford motor uh, that they came out with, and uh, try to avoid the 6.0 liter 2003. Yeah, you see them on lots and you get a really good deal, but there's a reason why that is because those engines had major problems. And unless you spend another probably 10 grand to bulletproof the motor, it's not gonna be a reliable truck. In my opinion, leave comments if you think otherwise, uh, but if you Google it on the interweb, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, if you could find a low mile 99 through 2003 7.3 liter uh, turbo diesel, um, low miles, I mean 150,000 or lower is considered low miles on these. I have friends that have 400 and 500,000 miles on their 7.3s right now. Um, but there are some things to look out for. Uh, the injection system, uh, the high pressure oil uh, is used to fire the injectors so it doesn't have an injection pump like my Cummins truck does. That's in a previous video I showed you uh, the build I did on that. Um, it's not like the Duramax either so they're usually using uh, high pressure oil to go into the injectors and then it electronically fires um, the fuel charge into the cylinder. So there's a high pressure oil pump, there's high pressure hoses, there's uh, what's called an ICP sensor, an IPR pressure regulator on high, high pressure oil pump, and then there's high pressure oil hoses going to each of the, each of the, uh, the heads. So I'll take you through on uh, how to update all that. Uh, but uh, I've got 118,000 miles on my 99 Ford, actually my pickup truck was built in October of 98. Um, so it's called an early 99. You may see that out there too. So, uh, or 99.5 and newer. Um, so I have an early 99, which is the first uh, trucks made in the new body style, the Super Duty body style, which you still see running around today. Uh, but uh, I've been meaning to uh, check out my turbo. Uh, my turbo's got a little bit of play in the, uh, in the shaft, uh, also a little bit of oil seepage after 118,000 miles. So we've got another turbo and I'm also going to update the uh, turbo wheel to a Wicked wheel too. If you guys haven't done that, um, we'll see how that performs and uh, put a remanufactured turbo in the truck. And uh, a couple other items, I'm gonna modify the air cleaner, uh, get a little bit more airflow with, uh, I think it's a 6675 air cleaner, which is used on cat diesels and that sort of thing. But anyway, uh, nice snowy day once again here in Colorado, it's May 3rd. And one of these days uh, we'll start getting some liquid snow as I call it. Uh, but uh, anyway, I got some bench work to do. Let's start off with the, the new remanufactured turbo and the Wicked Wheel too. But uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate everybody subscribing to the channel. Let's get to it. Here's my new turbo from uh, Thoroughbred Diesel, remanufactured. And uh, they cleaned it up really nice, all new, I guess, more modern uh, oil seals and bearings in it. And this is, uh, looks like a part number 471128-9010. It has the wastegate on it, and um, here's the turbine wheel on the compressor side that I'm going to replace with the brand new Wicked wheel, which is just a gorgeous CNC machine. Check that baby out. And they've been making these for eight, nine years, I think, and that will replace the factory one. So this is a factory Garrett turbo just remanufactured. I don't need to go with crazy horsepower and start breaking other stuff. And uh, the one thing I'm going to do is the back pressure valve delete um, on my existing pedestal. So this is the pedestal that goes on the top of the motor and then the turbo sits on top of this and then the oil 
comes through the bottom of the pedestal in the back here through those ports and then up and into the turbo so you also get new o-rings with it and uh, should be good to go so once i delete this valve that leaks and goes into an arm that has a flapper valve on the housing it's supposed to give you more boost and i don't think that back pressure valve really does anything but uh, i was able to get on ebay the new pedestal with the delete on it and then also the new housing with the delete on it that normally would be in over here and um so that was like 170 bucks and this is for again an early 99. i need to get a wrench socket and uh first thing to do is take off the little circlip on the wastegate pull that out and try not to lose it take these bolts out of the side turbo and uh, let's get the new wheel on. So I've seen some videos where uh, guys have replaced this uh, while in the truck, put this new wheel on, and they use a uh, impact wrench and try to take the inertia to loosen the wheel. Uh, but the challenge with the 99 is I can't get to this lower bolt. There's a cover um, on the top of the engine, uh, engine head that blocks that bolt. Some people say use a wobble extension uh, with your socket. All right, so you're gonna need a 5 16 inch 12 point socket, which is probably gonna be impossible to find in quarter drive. So uh, this is about the smallest 12 point I have. It just happens to work. 5 16 on a 3 8 inch drive. And uh, there we go. side. So it's going to take a 5 8 on this side and it's just a right hand thread. And it shouldn't take much to break this loose. There it goes. Spin this off. So here's the difference between the two wheels. Looks like something somebody just drew up uh, 24, 25 years ago with a T-square and a drawing table. And this is more of a computer design wheel that CNC machined and the machine work on this is just spectacular and it's already balanced. You see a little notch there for the balancing of it, but the weight difference is pretty considerable. But, um, all right, so uh, next thing is get it back on the turbo, the new wheel. You can just put it on there, tighten it up. And I think we went to a metric size nut on here now on this wheel. And you don't have to tighten it and string them out, just snug it up uh, because the torque will continue to tighten it and then spin a little bit. There's no obstructions. Get the uh, cover back on, spin it a little bit, make sure there's no obstructions, no grinding, and then uh, go ahead and put the bolts back in again. And with the housing and the pedestal, I got these brand new bolts to use, which is super nice. So I'm going to have this all ready, so when I pull the other turbo off the truck, again, it's got 118,000 miles, been spinning for 23 years. i got to send that back to thoroughbred diesel, because uh, I want to get my core charge back. One thing I like doing uh, on all the turbos, which you should do, is put some oil down into the uh, oil passages and then spin the turbine a little bit to get the bearings uh, oiled up. Now, 
When they remanufactured this at Thoroughbred Diesel, I don't know if they did any assembly lube or anything on the bearings, but uh, just to be sure, I'm going to put some in there. That's always a good thing to do with turbos. So if you look up in your truck in the back underneath the turbo, you see oil leaking from either the top down from the turbo down or the pedestal down to the engine block. Um, here's the O-rings. And after so many years, the O-rings get real brittle, the ones Ford originally used, actually international. And they'll get brittle and start perishing, as the Brits call it, and uh, start weeping a little bit of oil. So it's a good idea to go ahead and put new O-rings in, as with the kit, and um, stop that oil seepage. So here's my truck. Got the hood up. I got it over. It's cooling off right now. Um, but uh, let's go over what I need to do here. There are plenty of uh, videos on removing the turbo. I'll put the link in the description for a really good one that Wade at Thoroughbred Diesel did. Um, so this video is not going to cover all the little intricacies of taking that turbo out. And as you can see, the turbo is way, way up in the back here, <laughs> like right up against the firewall. And it is a biatch to get to, especially the V-bands that hold um, the turbo onto the downpipe and the uppipe. The up pipe is actually all the way in the back, and uh, it's a bear. Um, so here's my air intake spider um, to my from my turbo um, to the intercooler. Comes down this way, and then goes through the intercooler, and then comes back up, and then into the basically the uh, inlets um, on each of the heads uh, for the airflow. Uh, in my previous video. Um, I did a new fuel system, a fast fuel system. I'll put the link in the description, which I absolutely love. Um, and then uh, a couple weeks ago, too, I had all this apart and I replaced the glow plugs. Um, and if you want an enjoyable day <laughs> spent working on a truck, uh, do the glow plugs in one of these, getting the valve covers off and uh, getting down in there and digging those out. So, uh, but that's done. Um, I also upgraded uh, about a year or two ago to a White Rogers glow plug uh, solenoid, which is like a heavy duty out of like a cat diesel truck. I think Cummins Commercial Details use these. And it's really heavy duty. I think it's like a 400 amp. I might be wrong, but I'll put the link in the Amazon link in the description. But if you haven't done this, even if you have just a base power stroke, uh, make sure you get rid of that crappy uh, glow plug solenoid that uh, comes from China um, that was originally on these. And then don't get the original OEM ones from Napa or AutoZone or on Amazon. <laughs> some progress the intercooler pipes are gone I removed the spider stuff some rags down the uh, inlet there air intake and as you can see this is the solenoid here for the exhaust back pressure valve and that tends to start leaking and uh, it looks like I've got some seepage underneath the pedestal up underneath there so it's a good thing I'm putting new o-rings on but here's the turbo ready to go except they have these V bands that have three ears on them and one's on the down pipe and one's on the up pipe in the back which is the biatch to get to and then after that I just undo a couple bolts on either side and that turbo lifts out of there 
So on a smaller scale, this is the V-band for the turbo uh, output, but uh, the exhaust bands are just a little bit bigger than this, but you can see it has three ears. So what you want to do is just soak the heck out of those V-bands with some PV blaster, like for a couple days if you can. And uh, those stainless steel V-bands kind of get welded to that hot exhaust and uh, kind of welded stuff on. So, so I've got them soaking now. I'm gonna undo them and uh, try to break them loose. But the idea is that if you can get a screwdriver or a, what I like using is about a two pound seal puller or bearing puller and just kind of lip it onto the edge of this ear, snap it back and then try to get the other ones, snap it down to break them loose rather than trying to pry from the center to try to pry them up, which I guess you could do with some brute strength. But I think it's easier to just, if I can get this tip going, that way it kind of pivots out away from the flange. So anyway, let's go back into time warp. All right, the turbo is out. It wasn't too bad from start to finish. It was about two hours. But um, so here's the pedestal with the back pressure solenoid delete on it. And here's the flapper valve that's in the housing. And you can see how that works on the early 99 and the 99.5 and above. So anyway, Naturally, I've deleted that. This one doesn't have that restriction, and that's considerable restriction. Now, I have read that people use this as an exhaust brake. Um, they wire it in and put a cable or something on it, but I don't carry that many loads um, that heavy that I would need an exhaust brake. So here's the pedestal out of the truck, and you can see the exhaust back pressure solenoid, and you can see the problem that the Fords have is that they start leaking right around in here. And um, anyway, to get this out, um, there's this little keeper uh, that slides in and out. Just reach up underneath there, push back on that, and that'll break the, uh, the little ring clip. So that was real nice, actually, them putting that on there. So if you have an older Power Stroke 7.3 or you're going to buy a new one or you bought one recently, the one thing that you want to do absolutely on an older truck like this is replace the high pressure oil lines that go to each head that fuel the injectors. Um, that's how you fire your fuel and your cylinders electronically with high pressure oil. So you can see I got the kit on here and uh, here's the bypass for the equalizer tube that goes in between the, uh, the two uh, heads and they give you uh, some uh, heat shielding because of the heat from the turbo. Here's one line comes into the pump and you see the fittings down there. You get all new fittings and everything in the kit and then these lines are good for I think it's 5,300 pounds of pressure first. So uh, and then here's the other line coming in. So this is going to go to the right head, the driver side head. This goes to the passenger side. And then this basically equalizes the pressure between the two heads uh, in the rear. And I'll show you the older hoses. And again, this is 23 years ago. This was installed in the truck. And it has the split loom on it. But if you take it off, you got a stainless steel braided line underneath with rubber underneath it. And some people will tell you, oh, those will never break. Yeah, I've seen them break. They burst. So, uh, and I took these out and the rubber underneath here, I can hear it cracking. It's super stiff and just aged, you know, from all the heat and pressure on it all these decades. So uh, anyway, to get these off, you do need a special tool. And I'll put the link in the description on Amazon for this. It's like 10 bucks. And what you do to get these off, these are like snap-on connectors. And you're gonna put your tool in between that plastic and then rock it back and forth and it'll release. So that's about the only way to get them off. And the kit that I got is from Crude Diesel Performance. I'll put the link on eBay, Ken's the owner. 
and he does an amazing job on, on new pipes. And uh, they're only like, I think it came like $90 of free shipping on sale. And uh, you're going to regular hydraulic line fittings, which is even more capacity than this little thin, thin little braided steel pipe that they had running. So here's the difference. I'll set them side by side. This is what you have, and this is what you're going to with Ken's uh, conversion kit here. So great upgrade. Uh, if one of those bursts, you're going to have engine oil all over the place, um, and you're going to have to be towed home because the engine's not going to run, again, because it's relying on high-pressure oil to inject the fuel into the cylinders. So you can see I got the new turbo on, all bolted down, ready. Um, I do have new boots coming today, hopefully um, UPS from uh, Riff Raff. And uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is the IPR as a preventative maintenance item. The injector pressure regular <laughs> pressure regulator. The injector pressure regulator is down in here, and I'll show you that in a minute. The IPR, and then I'm also just as a preventative measure, I'm going to replace the ICP, which is just a sensor up on the uh, the head here. So I'm gonna get those two, and then these are, there's nothing wrong with these two. I'm just gonna put them in a glove compartment as a spare uh, in case I need them somewhere down the road. So uh, we'll see if we can get that IPR installed. Also, when you install the new fittings on the ports of the high pressure oil pump, the H-pop, um, you'll see these springs with a little disc on, on the end. And that's a check valve, I guess, back in the old days they did it for oil. Uh, drain it back from the reservoir and uh, whatever the reason, but everybody says uh, take those out and also uh, can it crude performance um, says to take them out. So that's what they look at like and they'll be right inside the port when you unscrew the fittings. Here's one of the old fittings here. You can see with a snap-on connector with a spring in it and much better to go to a regular hydraulic fitting. So, I only go with original Ford Motorcraft parts uh, when I'm doing my, my builds on the Fords. And uh, there's, and this is the Motorcraft, um, that's a CM5013 1X, and this is the factory IPR. I'm also going to replace the uh, cam sensor as a preventative maintenance item too, it's easy to do. Um, you just do a, like a 10 millimeter bolt head and then pop the new one in, it's up underneath on the, uh, the flywheel. Um, so I'm gonna do that later and that'll finish up my preventative maintenance type stuff. But when you open an original and there's, if you go on Amazon or eBay, there's a ton of Chinese knockoffs on these things. And uh, I hear bad things about them, but you should uh, get it in a foil pack. It also comes with a new rubber gasket for the connector. And uh, it should be sealed in a foil bag if it's original OEM type stuff here. Get the bag open. And this is the IPR. So again, it's regulating the pressure. This is actually a magnet. And here's the plunger that goes in and out. And when you energize this magnet in here with this electrical connector. The rod goes in and out and regulates the pressure um, that the high pop pump is doing. So first you take this, I think it's an 18 millimeter off, you take this hat off, you take off, this is the magnet element, and then here's the center. So I need to go find a socket, and I remember, I think it's like inch and an eighth, deep well so uh let me go find a socket and then i'll be back all right so it's right underneath the fuel bowl on the side and there you can see that my fingers out of the way right there's the end nut and there's the hat and then there's a solenoid and here's the electrical connector right here that i'll undo so what i'm going to do is when you remove this there's going to be oil coming out so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it loose. I'm going to hand spin it and then I'm going to put a shop towel up underneath here and pat it really well to catch all the oil. And uh, I'm just going to drop the old one in the valley and stick the new one in real quick. So I'm going to do this off camera. That wasn't that bad. Pretty easy task. Here's the old one. It has some corrosion on it, but 
you know, this thing's been running for 23 years, so uh, I'm going to put this back in the foil bag, back in the main packaging, and keep that as a spare because I know it does work. Just got all my new boots in from Riff Raft. Made in the USA. These things are extremely strong, multiple layers. If you can see the layers in here. And I uh, highly recommend it. And I'll put the link in the description, but I uh, can't wait to get these on. I need to clean up all my old hose clamps and uh, put my spider back on. And boy, getting close. All right, so I got the intercooler pipes on and the new riffraff boots, which are super, super nice. Highly recommend it at riffraff.com. And uh, the spider's in, everything's connected back up, everything's tight. The next fun project I'm doing is I'm replacing the uh, the stock air filter, which was pretty small, with uh, the bigger 6673, I think it is, filter, which is like a heavy equipment filter. You can even buy these at Napa. And this one's made by Donaldson. Uh, Riff Raff sells basically a four inch elbow, or maybe you can find this at an exhaust shop, paint it black, and uh, you pretty much have the same thing. So, I had to cut the air box. I took the cover off. It's pretty easy to do. And the only modifications that I've done down in here is that there were two mounting screws in here. Uh, nuts for the uh, top cover to go on. So, I took them off and then I took my uh, vibrating cutter and uh, cut off this ridge all the way down here that stuck out. And then same thing down here, took this ridge out here. And then I had a little bump in here um, that had to be removed also. So I just chopped right through here and around. If I ever want to go back to stock, I could find plenty of these air boxes, probably in a junkyard or on eBay for a few bucks. So I'm not too worried about that. But uh, anyway, this thing fits right down in here now. Real nice and neat. Plenty of room to clear the hood. It looks level from the front. And I also have a sock to go on it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, get this elbow up in here and the hose clamps on and I'll finish that project. And after that, I have a billet catch can that I'm gonna mount uh, up on here. So uh, we'll do that next. All right, the elbow, perfect fit after I chopped it down. So fits real nice in here. Next thing is I have my official Riff Raff sock to go on here, and I know the Harley guys, I have a Harley uh, years ago, and uh, I put a sock over the air filter and it keeps the water out, lets it run down, so, plus uh, keeps the heavy duty stuff from getting into the filter, so, so I'll put that on. Next thing is I'm gonna see if I can fit a catch can. So I have this catch can I found on the interweb, and it's all, looks like billet machine, very nice and it screws off. And the nice thing is it has a three-quarter inch fitting on it. So here's the diameter of the, the CCV valve housing and uh, that'll go right on there. So I just need to get some uh, three-quarter inch probably heater hose, something like that. But the neat thing is it has this filter in here that you could take off and clean but the oil comes in here and it goes down all these little holes these holes are double filter if you could see down and get some light on this but if you look down in here see there's basically some strainers and the oily air goes into that and then hits the second one and then uh, drops the oil down into this little can here that you empty out once in a while. And it's going to keep all that oil from going into my intercooler pipes and the turbo and uh, keep my boots and stuff clean. So, so I'm going to see if I can give this a shot and get this installed. So here's how I'm going to mount this catch can. It comes with like this little hook with a couple uh, bolts. And I got just a regular three quarter inch conduit strap. And what I'm going to do is mount that up on the firewall, kind of on an angle like that. And then it's just going to hang hang on this hook. Fits it perfect. All right, I got the three quarter inch conduit bracket mounted. And uh, right up there, if you can see that. 
and this little hook on the end is just going to go like that. Hook right on. If I need to take it off, just unhook it. And now we'll get the hoses plumbed up. And I just picked up a couple regular three quarter inch barb brass fittings at uh, Home Depot. And I'll plumb everything up. And I've got myself some pretty flexible heater hose, three quarter inch, gates 37, 32, 70. And I'll go ahead and get this thing plumbed up. All right, so I thought I'd pause. And as you can see in the back, um, I reversed, uh, I guess they call it a doghouse. It is reversible. Uh, make sure you get new O-rings on there. Mine were all swelled up. So I went to the Ford dealer and got some new ones. They're like a couple bucks a piece. And uh, I've got my hose. I got my elbow on the back. And then I've got my stock elbow, rubber elbow, with a straight barb three-quarter inch fitting from Home Depot with a couple clamps on it coming out this way. So now I'll just run it up. And on the catch can itself, this is going to be the exhaust side on the left. And that will exhaust back down in where the air clean air intake is at. And then um, this is going to be my input that goes through all those filters that I showed you earlier. And just run this down to that pipe in the back. And I'll bring you back when it's all done. There it is all done. Man, I like this a lot. Just reach up in here, unscrew it, empty it, screw it back on again. All right, battery's back in. Um, I've had some people ask me, uh, where did I get these connectors at? And what's nice is that they actually have slots where you put in your auxiliary wires into the side right there and then tighten down the Allen wrench screws. And then for your main and then your auxiliary. So before I had a bunch of ring connectors on here, one for the lights, one for the trickle charger, one for the fast fuel system that I put on. So now everything just comes in here nice and clean and I got rid of all the ring terminals on both the positive and the negative. So I'll put an Amazon link in the description, but these are fantastic, really cleans it up a lot. So here's the ICP sensor that I took out. I only use original Ford parts. I don't want the Chinese knockoffs on my truck. And uh, the old style has the smaller nut on the back uh, where it screws out. Um, so if you have a hard start problem where you're not cranking over, try disconnecting the lead coming into this sensor and see if the truck runs. And if that's so, it starts up, then uh, you're good to go. You know it's the sensor. Also, too, uh, as the sensors get old, oil starts coming up, the high-pressure oil starts coming up into the connector. So if you unplug it and you see oil, it's time to replace it also. Um, here's my cam position sensor that's ready to go in. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do as long as I'm digging in this thing is uh, the exhaust back pressure sensor um, that requires regular maintenance. This is the tube that goes down from the sensor. I'll show you that in a bit. It plugs in uh, on the passenger side through the wheel well, you'll see it. But this tubing comes off of the exhaust manifold, tends to get plugged up with soot. There are lots of videos on how to replace this. I'm not going to show you that, but uh, just uh, Google or uh, look on YouTube for that or Google it. Um, there are people that take wire or like a uh, trimmer line from a weed whacker on the end of a drill and run it up through here and clean it out really good. But uh, I just happened to buy one of these already brand new, ready to go in. I'll keep the other as a spare compared to the older one. So if you see the big nut, it's been replaced at one time or another. And uh, that's ready to go. And that's going to control and send data to the computer on the pressure. And then that's going to activate the IPR, which is the injection pressure regulator, which we switched out earlier. And that's down below there. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, my vacuum pump on my uh, heater and air conditioning is kind of getting sluggish, so I think about time for a new vacuum pump. Diesels don't have vacuum on them, so you have to put an electric pump in to create the vacuum. And this is this wasn't much; this is like 20 bucks. And uh, you are stuck with a Chinese knockoff. That's all they make. 
for this. And this goes right in here. Get some light. This goes right in here on the passenger side and you can see it down in here. So that shouldn't be that bad. So I'll disconnect the battery leads because if you short up against this, this is your starter solenoid. I uh, don't want to hit that and it looks like a couple just two 10 millimeter bolts and the bracket comes out. Disconnect the vacuum line, put the new one in and it's done. So this is the back pressure valve. You see it up in there. Uh, that's the other end of that tube that I'm going to have to unscrew. And I got some penetrating fluid on there just to ease it up a bit. And then the other end of that sensor is right here. And that tube comes up underneath. I've got some light on it. You'll probably see that down in there. So the easiest way is I found to take the belt off. It's just a half inch uh, breaker bar through the tensioner. Loosen it up and move this belt to the side and it's pretty easy to get to and take that sensor out. Put a new one in and uh, I think I'm getting to the end of the project here. So when you do the pedestal delete uh, for the exhaust pressure solenoid uh, potential oil leak, um, the solenoid wire that activates the solenoid to shut the exhaust flap is right here. I pulled it back underneath the spider. But make sure you get one of these little plugs. And what that's going to do is fold the computer uh, into thinking that that solenoid's still there. Um, if you don't, you might get some uh, soft engine codes. Nothing catastrophic, but you'll get some engine codes, uh, soft ones. This is the H-POP, the high pressure oil pump reservoir. And it's a good idea every few years to take the plug out of here and it comes out with a what is this 3 16 inch allen wrench and uh, suck out the juice in here even though i've seen youtubes where the engine oil circulating through here this is a reservoir that just holds it and i guess from what i heard and have read uh, the sludge and stuff builds up in the bottom of this because that part doesn't really circulate i guess so it's a good idea to pump this out. I'm using a marine type pumper, uh, Gilboy, I guess it is, made by Tempo. And I'll see if I can find the Amazon link, put it in the description. But this is great. If you don't have one of these for changing oil and lawnmowers, tractors, and then also I bought it for my boat um, where you can't get at the drain plug. And I've been pumping on this a while and it looks like it's taken out about a quart. So all the sensors and everything have been replaced on the uh, injection system for the high pressure oil hoses, all that stuff I showed earlier in the video. There's one thing that I'm not changing out, and that is the IDM, which is the injector drive module, uh, which is a small box with a plug connector, and it's located underneath the driver's side wheel well. So you take the lining out of the wheel well, just lower it down, and the box sits pretty much up in here, bolted on the side of the inner fender um, just pops right out um, after a lot of miles I mean I'm hearing like three four hundred thousand miles might start to have an issue um, I think the diodes go bad or something in it you can get rebuilt ones send your core in to rebuild them let's get this thing started let's put the window down so we can hear what the turbine's doing Starts right up. It was down to about 42 degrees last night. So I'm going to let it warm up a little bit. But it is running super smooth. Wow. Very nice. Let's get out on the main road and see what this thing can do. Boy, I don't know if you can hear that wicked wheel. Oh, that is sweet. It has a different sound to it than my other uh, unit. So, but uh, this thing.
thing, uh, this truck definitely has more power to it now. Let's punch it down again. So I'll have to uh, clock and see my 0 to 60 time now with the changes that are made. But uh, I'm really pleased with uh, all the stuff that I did. So I think I'm good for another uh, 23 years here, hopefully. I already changed out the front wheel bearings. That was a couple years ago in the early 99. You could change wheel bearings out. Uh, so you're uh, using the more current rotors too, by the way, if you have a an early 99, they call it power stroke so you could do that because they only made those rotors for about six months that were on it what else did i do there's a 2013 transmission in here heavy duty transmission that i replaced that was about five years ago with the uh, oversized uh transmission cooler that had to be put in uh for the uh, ford warranty so i basically got the transmission on a pallet Put that in so i've got a 7.3 with the heavy duty 2013 transmission behind it and uh yeah this thing is sweet now sounding good so let's go ahead and wrap it up this became a pretty long video uh the next thing i want to do is get some gauges in here i want to see what my h pop pressure is my boost my trans and my uh, egt temperature so uh, i'm going to do that with a glow shift i already have it in the box where you put in maybe i'll do the next video on that but anyway let's go ahead and wrap it up please like share and subscribe if you have any comments on uh, anything that i may have missed or did wrong or whatever i'm always learning so uh, put it put in the comment field i read all the comments and respond to them as uh, a lot of you know in all my other videos but uh anyway let's wrap it up thanks for watching